This video is part 10 in our nerve entrapment series where we will be covering an entrapment of the brachial cords at the subscapularis muscle. In this video, we cover the following, the function of the nerve, where entrapments occur, why entrapments occur, clinical signs of an entrapment, and lastly, how to effectively treat it. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain. My focus is on diagnosing and treating scar tissue and reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning and long lasting pain relief. I am also the creator of the peak method and the founder of the soft tissue treatment revolution, where we teach overworked massage therapists, a better treatment system that will allow you to cut your treatment times by at least 50%. So you can stay healthy, avoid that dreaded burnout and help a hell of a lot more people get out of pain. All right, nerve entrapments part 10. If you haven't watched any of the other videos in the series, uh, I will link them up up top here on YouTube. If you are watching that on there, if not, I will include it in the description box below. But brachial cords um, getting entrapped at the subscapularis muscle is a huge problem that is often very misdiagnosed and not found by a lot of providers. It, links to a lot of problems in the shoulder itself, but a lot of problems down the arm and a lot of entrapments up there can cause problems further down in the arm. So let's get right into it. So what are the function of the brachial cords? The plexus is a group of nerves that assists in all motor and sensory actions in the upper extremity. And it is controlled by the C5 to T1 portion of the spinal cord. I went through those nerve roots and the other trainings all the way down to C8. I'm going to do a T1 a little later down the road. These nerves end in what is called terminal branches, which are responsible for motor and sensory innervation of the upper arm. And this includes the musculocutaneous nerve, the axillary nerve, the radial nerve, median nerve nerve and ulnar nerve, basically all the nerves of the upper extremity originate in there and they start from the spine. So a lot of problems can be associated back to brachial cord entrapments. So where does it get stuck? Right on the subscap, um, especially where it exits out, you know, right under that clavicle there and then under the pec minor, and then right on top of the subscap as well. There's a lot going on there. There's blood vessels, there's muscles, there's things pulling in different directions. A lot of times people think it's like a pec minor problem. They think there, there, there's an issue with the pec minor just because of that symptom location, but the pec minor sits right on top of all that. And a lot of it doesn't have direct con um, contact with the brachial cord. So it's really not the problem. It's actually right in there in the subscap, all up in the axilla, right in the armpit as well. That's where you're going to find those brachial cords getting entrapped in all different areas. So why does it get stuck? Cover this in every one of the trainings. One is just poor and sustained posture. Over time, the muscles develop scar tissue. When scar tissue forms, like glue gets inside there, makes the muscle less flexible, weak, gets bigger and bigger. Eventually, it gets stuck to the muscle and the nerve. And then when that happens, you get numbness, aching, burning, and tension. I do see this a lot in injury or trauma, uh, especially people that have had histories of like shoulder dislocations or separations. Um, and then I see it a lot in like people that played sports, maybe like contact sports, like football, lacrosse, um, hockey, things like that, where the shoulder just really gets beat up. I've also seen this a lot in um, post mastectomy and like breast augmentation, which is means a boob job. Um, basically what happens is, especially if they do ones where they go under the, 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 the pec and in through there, they kind of cut through there as well. Um, especially in the breast cancer people as well, they remove the lymph nodes and they go in and they take a lot out and creates a lot of scar tissue as well. So I've seen this a lot in like post mastectomy and cancer patients down the road where they have a ton of like upper shoulder down into the arm problems because this happens as well. And then other surgeries as well, if they've gone in there and done some work in the axilla as well. So some common injuries associated with an entrapment, carpal tunnel syndrome. I always say anything with syndrome doesn't really tell us anything, but a lot of times when people are having issues further down in the wrist and the arm, it's coming from higher up, especially if there wasn't a huge history of trauma to the wrist or the forearm. Uh, medial elbow pain, better known as golfer's elbow, that's going to be an entrapment of the ulnar nerve. Lateral elbow pain, better known as tennis elbow, that's going to be an entrapment of the radial nerve. And then a lot of thoracic outlet syndrome. You know, a lot of people try to say the thoracic outlet is caused by the pec minor, uh, the scalenes, 
Uh, what else? The ribs being elongated. You got a weird first rib and stuff like that. And people have all these like crazy surgeries and start taking things out when the problem was actually right on that subscap at the brachial cords. So how to find it? Because I always say, if you can't find it, you sure as hell can't fix it. So the way I like to do it is uh, I have the client position um, for palpation. They're supine laying down and they're going to kind of have their arm off to the side of the table, kind of rested on my knee and with the arm kind of pulled down as we go. The other arm kind of pulled down across the body as we go through. Uh, what I want to include first in the training this week is just an advanced palpation video of me going through the landmarks of finding where that is, because, you know, a lot of people think they're on the subscap, but in many cases, they're really just on the lats or Terry made Terry's major or they're too high. And you want to see how to get in there just right. So you know where you are. So I'm going to link that one up first is I like to open this up and I let the table do the work for me. So I let this relax right here on my quad. This allows everything to relax. I get the lotion in there nice and easy. And then essentially what I want to do is I want to find some landmarks to let me know I'm on it. Usually what happens when people treat this subscap, they're actually putting pressure on like the teres major or the lat and it's not an effective treatment. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that hurts so much when they get it treated. It's because you're not on the subscap. So essentially what I like to do here is open this up and then I pinch here and I know this is all the lat and this is all the teres and then I know up here is the pec. And what I want to do is dissect the middle of that and I'm going to go in and I want to aim right up towards the throat. And what I'm able to do is once I find those landmarks is I sink in nice and slow. And if you go in too quick, you're pulling skin, the patient will not like that. So I sink in nice and slow and don't rush this one. As you sink in, your thumb should start to disappear. If you're seeing the whites of your thumb or the nail, you're actually on that teres are that lat. So what I do is I sink in nice and slow, taking my angle right up towards there. And then I go all the way in until I feel the skin push back on me. Now I know I'm as deep as I need to go and I back out just a little bit. And then the key here is you're going to take your depth straight down into the tissue. And it's not that thick. A lot of people are way too compressive and it doesn't need a lot of compression. So you just let it sink straight down and get in there and feel what you can feel for palpation, see if there's any scar tissue in through there and if it needs treatment. Now, the thing about the subscap is it's very important. It's the only muscle that stabilizes that shoulder from the front. But the problem is a lot of people are too quick with their palpation. They don't find their landmarks. They don't get in there how they should. So be slow with it, find your landmarks and the subscap palpation will be a lot easier and less excruciating for the patient. If people are wincing in pain, it's either because you're on the lat, you're on the teres major, or you're pulling too much skin. Slow down, use some lotion, and make it a more effective palpation so you can get information about what's going on in the muscle so you can treat it effectively. So you can see in that palpation video, I'm very slow, very precise, very focused. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. There's nerves, there's blood vessels, there's arteries, all sorts of things. You want to go slow, use the landmarks, go in there nice and slow. Let the tissue accommodate because it's really not that thick in the subscap and you want to get it just right. So then what I do is basically I go in right when I feel that. And a, a thing that I like to do when I'm feeling for the brachial cords is I'll go in and I'll feel for the axillary artery and that gives me a pulse. So when I know that, I know that on either side of that is going to be some of those brachial cords. I do not want to be right on top of that axial artery because you don't want to constrict the blood flow. So what I'll do is I'll find it, feel the pulse, and then I'll go just below that, inferior. And when I do that, then I start to feel, is that nerve moving? Is it bowing? When there's an entrapment of the brachial cords, it feels stuck. It literally is stuck to the muscle with that scar tissue in there, and it doesn't bow how it should. And the client will feel it too. They'll be like, ooh, that is tender from what I feel. So the take home here when you're palpating is slow down, be deliberate, 
and have less force since the muscle is right on top of that bone. So how to effectively treat it, you know, everyone wants to jump into the treatment, but we got to find it first, know where it is so we can get the right treatment every single time. And we're not just randomly beating up the tissue and causing a lot of damage. You want to be slow, precise, and focused. So what I want to link up now is an advanced treatment demonstration from our training courses of how I actually go in there and treat that area where that subs cap is. So I'll link that up right now. Now, once we've cleaned up the capsule and we've cleaned up the infraspinatus, now we need to get in there and clean up the subs cap. And you got to make sure you watch the video over and over again about the palpation of this subs cap and being very precise. Because if you're off just a little bit, you're going to be on the nerve, you're going to be on the lat, it's going to hurt like hell for the client. And you're not going to get an effective treatment. So the way we want to look at this is essentially if the shoulder is sitting like that and you're going to come in through that, the subscap sits on the top of that. And what happens is a lot of people, it's very similar to the infraspinatus where there's not a lot of tissue in there. So you want to get it just right. And I like to do this with the client laying on their back. So you always want to use some lotion. Lotion is going to really help because it's a very sensitive area. What you would want to do is get your table up as high as possible as you can, because that's going to help you with your body mechanics. Now the key is actually the positioning. So what you're going to do is have the client scoot their body over a little bit, and that's going to get everything to open up. Get a little bit of lotion in there to open that up. Make sure you watch the advanced palpation of the subscap. If you don't watch that and get this right, and you try the treatment before, it's going to be very counterproductive. Now the key is going to be in the motion. So once we get in there and we find the area that needs the treatment, what we do is we start it in a very shortened position. And then the first thing we're going to do is get this arm to open up and come back. That's our first motion. That's the motions we always want to get on the shoulder is bringing this arm back. Because if we don't get that, it doesn't matter what the other motions are. So the key here is your body position. So we want to approach it like a 45 degree angle, very similar to what we talked about with the infraspinatus. So the motion here is I'm going to be lined up just like that. And as we go in, that allows me to sink in on that subscap. Then I back out. I've already done the palpation. I've already found all that. And then I'm going to put that muscle in that shortened position. And my depth is going to be just a very slight drop in with my body weight, maybe about four or five ounces of pressure. And then my tension is going to be a lean straight across. And that's loaded up. And we're gonna put in a little more shortened position. And what you're gonna do is slowly start to drop that in just like that. And you're gonna go very slow, very precise. When you feel it start to pull, now you're gonna shift your body around and you want a traction with that. And you're not in a rush. You're getting that to open up. You're leaning in with more of that tension. Body mechanics. You want to continue to go slow. We talk about this. To go fast, you have to go slow first, and you don't need to be in a rush in here. Now, the mechanics are very important. The first thing is you're going to line up, and you're going to sink in just like that. Going to back out and your depth is going to be just a very slight elbow drop to the floor that's all you need and then your tension is going to be a little bit of a lean that's loaded up you're going to start to move the arm about 25 percent you're going to feel that and then when it starts to pull you're going to shift your body and go just like that it should not be painful it should not be excruciating if it is, you did not watch the advanced palpation video. This is very important for an effective shoulder treatment and re resolution of the shoulder problem, but you got to get your body mechanics right. So you're going to practice kind of going in here with that, stepping and going just like that. And that's where it comes from the setup and getting the setup correct, because if your setup isn't correct, you're not going to get an effective treatment. So a couple of things that I didn't cover in the video, that was more just like general, like finding it and getting some tension on it. But sometimes you want to be a little more precise from where it is. And there's going to be arm movement based on the location of the entrapment. So when it's higher up, like towards what's called the radial nerve, the radial nerve sits higher up in there as well. What I actually do is as I'm doing the motion, it starts in a shortened position. I bring their arm back 
into the abduction. And then I actually internally rotate as I do that. That's going to allow me to get that radial nerve entrapment. And a lot of that you're going to pick up as well, based off the symptom location of where they're having the problem. It's going to explain more and more that you're thinking radial nerve versus ulnar nerve versus median nerve, where they're feeling it down the arm and into the hand. That gives you a lot of details about what's going on. And that's why you do a very thorough and in-depth um, consultation and take a history so you know what's going on. Then when it gets lower down into the ulnar nerve and median nerve, what I like to do is start it here and then I just bring it straight back into abduction and bring it all the way up, just like you saw in the video. But it's a little different based off of that. And then the way we wanna treat it, we always wanna get proper depth, back out a little bit, then we tension into it and then we have the client start to move and we feel that tissue slide say this in every training video, this is not pin and stretch. This isn't myofascial release. It's not even ART. What it is, is precise and focused and very, very delicate because these nerves are sensitive. If you push on them too hard, you take it too far. It's going to be counterproductive and make the problem a lot worse. And then lastly, I never do more than about three to five treatment passes where I find that entrapment is, is occurring and I don't want to go any further. You know, you always want to do more, but there's that dosage. If you do too much, it's going to be overly effective, cause the problem to get worse, create a lot of inflammation and cause a lot of problems for the client. You don't want to do that. Less is better. Be more precise, be more focused, be more detailed, and you'd be amazed at the results that you can get. So that's all I got for you guys on this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, something you could do, you could reach out after going through all our free training courses. Uh, links for that is listed wherever you're consuming that. And you can see if any of our in-depth training courses will be worth investing in. I appreciate you guys watching the video and we will see you on the next one. Bye.